So one of the best things about having Mo Norman as a teacher and a mentor was the insights he could give me on how I could become a better person and a better golfer. And I wanna share with you today some of the personal insights from Mo Norman. So there's no better feeling knowing that when you wake up in the morning to go play golf, so that you're gonna play well. There's no better feeling of hitting good golf shots down the fairway. Years ago, I was frustrated because I lost that. I was confused, I was frustrated, and then I met Mo Norman and learned the single plane swing. And so now, I wake up every day and I know I'm gonna hit it well, I know I'm gonna play well, I know I'm gonna have fun. So my mission today is to help as many people as possible wake up every day feeling good that they're gonna go out there and play great because of the single plane swing. Hey, it's Todd Graves, welcome to the channel today. I thought I would simply have a conversation with you and do an actual YouTube vlog, which is actually me speaking my mind about a few things that happen when I am a pure coaching, and I'm in pure coaching mode. What I mean by that is, when I, when I coach people and, and teach people, there's things I run into that I think are extremely valuable that can be very helpful from a mindset perspective. Now, one of these things is simply some of the things that Mo gave me insight on that, that really helped me. And it wasn't necessarily golf swing related, but it was really mindset related. And so I wanted to share with you some mindset stuff today. Because we can talk all day long about swing technique and all that stuff. And you can find all that stuff in my instruction on Single Plane Academy, Inside Graves Golf On Demand, and all the places that I put our instruction. But at the end of the day, if your mind, if your head isn't right, how are you going to get the most out of your practice, get the most out of your game, get the most out of yourself if your mind isn't right. And one of the things that Mo was very clear about when I met him was making sure my mind was right for the task. And here's what's interesting. When, this is a couple months before Mo died, I was having lunch with him, and I asked him the question, I said, Mo, why me? Like, why was I the guy? Of all the golfers you had met and played with and the young guys you had met, and all the Canadian pros and all these people, why, why, did, why did you and I build this relationship? And you know what Mo told me? He didn't say, hey, Todd, I like you more. He didn't say, hey, Todd, you're better than all these guys. He didn't say any of that. What he said was, you wanted it. You wanted it. And so to me, when somebody wants it, people are willing to, to, to help them get it. And Mo was definitely that for me. So number one, if I'm gonna give you a little bit of my insight today, it's, do you want it? And, and, and it's a pretty simple question. And the, here's why I ask that. Because if you're kind of experimenting, and there's nothing wrong with experimentation, but I know this for a fact, that if you're gonna make real progress and real transformational change in your game, you gotta commit. Because here's another thing Mo talked talk to me about. The very first thing he said to me when I met him, which was, this was 1994, he said, believe in yourself. You gotta believe in yourself. Now, a lot of people might not know what that means, but believing in yourself to me now means something different than it did then. Believe in yourself means, are you committed? Like, do you believe in the, what you're doing is, is the best thing for you? And do you believe that the work you're gonna put behind it and the, and the practice you're doing is gonna give you the result you want in the future? And just go for it, believe in yourself. Don't believe in what somebody else tells you, believe that, that you're gonna do whatever it takes to get the job done. That's why Mo said to me, because you wanted it, because I believed that I was gonna do whatever it took, and I, that was my commitment, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to build a single plane swing and swing like Mo. Now, that's the second thing. The other thing that, that I wanna discuss today is simply when you do practice. And I see this a lot with students. And this is where I think a lot of students kind of fall apart. And you may fall into this category. And this is what I call finding your sweet spot. Now, if you read Dan Coyle's book, The Talent Code, which I love that book and I give Dan a lot of credit for writing such a great book. If you don't have it, you should get it. He talks about two things in that book that are important. One is ignition. Ignition is the same thing as believing in yourself, seeing yourself doing it in the future. Read about that, it's called ignition. And number two is finding your sweet spot when you practice. Now, what does sweet spot when you practice mean? I'll give you an example here while we're hitting some balls. So let's say I'm gonna work on my address position. Let's just start at the beginning. And I'm working on my address. So what happens is, you're maybe you're changing something. Okay, 
So I change something. And, and let's, say, let's say I want to get the face more square. I'm just using that as an example. So I step up here and I make the face more square. That's a different feeling for me, okay? So I got the new feeling, then I'm gonna hit a ball. So I got the new feeling, then I'm gonna hit one. Now, I'm not saying that felt good or bad, but I, but I felt the new position, okay. Now, I'm gonna do it again. And again, I start, and all of a sudden now, after, you know, it might take 30 minutes, might take an hour or whatever, after a few minutes, I start getting into that position a little easier. I don't have to work as hard. It starts making more sense. It starts getting more comfortable. And I find that sweet spot. I find out where it's right. A lot of times I'll have a camera up, like I'll have a camera there, or a camera there, and I'll be videotaping what I'm doing so I can check it. Most of the time, almost all the time, I'll have an alignment trainer down. You notice I always use this because I'm trying to get into my sweet spot, that feeling, that perfect feeling of where it's perfect so I can make a swing. Okay, let's take that to the backswing. Let's say I'm working on a position. Now, I always work in order. My dress position's great. Let's say I'm working on my backswing. And I'm, by the way, I'm just teaching you guys how, to, how your mind has to be right to practice correctly here. So now let's say I'm working on my backswing and I got my dress position where I really like it. And then I have this backswing. Let's say I'm flat or let's say I'm, I'm out of position. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna practice that position. Where do I want it? Right there, okay. Where do I want it? I wanna be right there, got it, okay? I wanna be right there, got it. Now, you'll notice that I'm gonna try to hit one. So there's my feeling of backswing. Okay, I got it, I like that feeling. And let's say I screwed it up. Let's say, let's say I took it back and I didn't like it, right? That's okay. Here's the thing about it. I would maybe have a video. I would say, okay, I wanna be more here, not here. And then I would find that spot again. And once I find it, I practice it diligently with repetition. I find my sweet spot. You'll notice that the sweet spot is somewhere in between good and bad. It's, so the sweet spot is bad, okay, got it, bad, got it. So making a mistake isn't really the problem here. It's not focusing and not finding your sweet spot so you can keep practicing correctly. I use video to find my sweet spots. Every time I practice, I make sure I'm doing it correctly. I always wanna be in my sweet spot when I'm practicing. Otherwise, practice is a waste of time. Now, what you're gonna find, and by the way, I'm talking swing practice here. Notice that I did not focus on results. Notice that I didn't care about where the ball went. Notice that I'm not sitting here going, okay, did I hit it left or right? I don't give a, sh a crap. What I care about is the thing that I'm practicing. Okay, that backswing thing. Okay, I got it. Got it, okay. Let me, let me see if I can hit one, I got it. Okay, let me see if I can hit it. So again, this is where I, I see students make their biggest mistakes. They're so focused on results, they're not focused on their sweet spot. What's the thing that you're working on What's the thing that you're practicing that you're trying to get right, matching the model? What's the thing that you need to be zeroing, zeroing in on that's gonna make you better? And then when you find it and you get that feeling, practice that feeling diligently until you get it. So this is where, as a coach, so think about it for a second. I'm your coach and I'm working with you on the range. What am I doing? I'm finding your sweet spot. I'm saying, okay, we gotta get it here. We gotta get your backswing here. Got it? Okay, got it. And then I'm focusing you in on that. I'm keeping you focused. You say, why to go left? I don't care. I care about that swing position right there. Okay, you got it? That's it. You got it. So I'm focusing you in on your sweet spot and I'm making you stay, keep your mind on that one thing that you're working on so that makes it better because if I can make that better, it all gets better, you understand? So that's, as a coach, and we need coaches, and I'll tell you why. We need coaches because all of us are so, have a difficult time focusing on the task at hand. In other words, we wanna hit good shots, we're getting ready to go play a tournament, we got 20 minutes before we gotta go back to work. We are not good at focusing on the sweet spots of our practice. You know who is? 
Mo Norman was good at it. Tour players are good at it. Anybody who becomes good at golf at one point has been good at it. You see, the difference is that they have learned, it's a skill they've learned, is the ability to practice correctly. And so I'm trying to help you today understand that if you're, it, it, you, you gotta commit to the single plane swing, number one, and number two, it's all about practicing, getting the, matching the model, and then finding your sweet spots when you practice. Okay, what do you need to work on? Okay, I'm working on my, my backswing position, okay? Where is it? It's right here, got it, okay. Got my backswing position. Now I'm gonna try to hit one with that position. All right, now I'd go back, video, did I get it? Got it, okay. I'm gonna do it again. Backswing position, got it, backswing position. And I'm gonna keep working on that thing that I'm working on and finding its sweet spot and training the crap out of it. That's today's, that's today's vlog, and I hope it helps you kind of figure out how you can take your practice time, use it more effectively and efficiently. If you're interested in me, in learning more about single point swing, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, Put the bell icon. I'll see you in the next video.